Hello, I'm Atuba George, and listen, I'm so glad to be here bringing God's truth to you. God's word is the only real comfort that anyone can have. So if you lack the word of God, you're in real trouble. Now, especially when you're going through a challenge and then you lack the word of God, then you are in real trouble. Praise God. You see, that's why you must find every avenue to receive the word of God. Now, when I mean receive the word of God, not just, not just carry your Bible and read. The reason we read the Bible is so we can receive the word of God. See? So when you take that Bible, make sure your heart is listening for the word. I've always told you this. We don't read the Bible. We hear. We may be looking into the Bible, but we are listening. Because <laughs> what do you mean by that? Yeah, when we open the Bible, we are setting the atmosphere for God to speak to us. When we go to church, we are setting the atmosphere for God to speak to us. When we meet around believers, we are setting the atmosphere for God to speak to us. That's why Scripture tells us, do not forsake the assembly of the saints. There's a reason for that. There's a reason. You've got to make sure you are always in the midst of God's people. You know the reason? And how do you know God's people? You don't know God's people because of the church they attend. No. You know God's people by the word of God in their mouth. <laughs> God. So, so if someone is around you and he says, oh, I'm a Christian or I'm a pastor, but you don't find the word of God in his mouth, you've got to be weary of such a person as a friend. Your friends must be those who have the word of God in their mouth. I'll tell you this, that's the safest place you can be. Praise God. Yeah. Because see, if you ever want to go wrong, someone is just, someone's just going to tell you, hey, hey, you know, I was praying last night or, or this morning. You know what the Lord reminded me of? Or you know what the Lord woke me up with this morning? Say what? He told me this and he told me this. And without that person knowing, he is speaking directly to you. And I, okay. Hmm. Ah, oh, I get it now, Lord. I get it now. And that thing I was planning, I was planning to do. Mm, no, 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 I'm not doing it anymore. Now I've got many testimonies like this, you know, on, on, on this broadcast. You know, I receive messages, people tell me, ah, I was, I was in the midst of making a decision. But that day you shared this message and that just answered exactly what I, what I was looking for, what I was going through. And I changed my mind concerning that. That's what the word of God does. Praise God. So when I say I'm glad to be bringing God's word to you, I mean it from the bottom of my heart because we are setting the atmosphere right now that you will hear the voice of God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a new week, Lord. And we thank you for what you are doing in this month of October, even as we are entering the final days of this month, Lord. You are doing a new thing in our lives. You are doing a new thing in our nation. And we are grateful for it. And we see the end of that which you have started. And we know it will be good. Because you love us. And you care so much for us. Thank you, precious Lord. We give you praise. Even right now, burdens are being lifted and yokes are being destroyed by the power in your word. Therefore, Lord, let your voice come true to everyone that is watching and listening right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I want to share something with you today. And let's see how far the Lord will help us to get you to the place of understanding in this. I'm going to be sharing from 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I want to talk to you in the light of what's been going on in our nation. I want to talk to you from the depth of my heart. And, 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 and being one who have asked the Lord concerning these things and being one who have received the word of the Lord concerning these things. Now, let me tell you something about the word of God. 
It's not just when God says, my son, this is what is going to happen. Oh, that you rejoice about. I found out in my years of walking with the Lord. You must first of all understand the, what I call the logos of God. What does that mean? The character of God. You see, many times people misunderstand prophecy when they receive it. So sometimes people don't even know that the prophecy they receive have come to pass. They, don't, they didn't know it. You say, why? Because they didn't understand the character of the one who was speaking to them. So it's, it's important you understand the logos of God. What would that do to you? It knocks off certain misunderstandings from your heart. There are certain things when you know the character of God, you know he will never do. So when he speaks a word to you and your mind is interpreting it in that way, you know, no, 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 God will not do this. This is not, his, this is not consistent with his character. So you knock that off and say, so what next? What? So, so how do I understand this better? See, see. So, so many, many prophecies have come concerning our nation. Many people have tried to interpret those prophecies. And, and you know, I remember what the Lord said to me. He said, listen, you know, you are always expecting me to fulfill my word. But you always find it difficult. Now, when he says you, he's talking about we, you know, his, his children. You, always, you find it difficult to allow me fulfill my word. You see, because the process of fulfilling his word is, it might not be palatable like you want to think or you want it to be. Now, this is the analogy the Lord gave to me when he was explaining this to me. He said, look, if you have a bad road, very bad, and the road has become so terrible, and you are struggling to drive on that road, and then the government now says, you know what, we are going to tackle this road and do it once and for all, and do it to the best. To do that now, we've got to create a diversion, you know, through the bush, so you just to divert, so, so you can clear that road completely for us to work on it. Now, for maybe two, three months, four months, you're going to be passing through this bush path. Now, you know you're going to still find people complaining that, can you imagine? I know they've eaten the money. I know they've eaten. Can you imagine how they are doing this? Can you imagine? They will keep complaining and complaining and complaining. But meanwhile, I say, why are you going through that bumpy road? Work is going on on that expressway. And But guess what? When the expressway is eventually finished and it's open for you to drive, you will forget all those months of driving on that bump. <laughs> praise God. And you're just going to drive smooth on that road. And I, wow, praise God. Man, ah, man. <laughs> praise God. So, you see, that temporary period, that, that period of, of, of waiting for the main thing to be done, a lot of will find it difficult to go through it. Now I'll read a scripture to you, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Watch this, it says, Therefore I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of things be made for all men. Now many times when we read this scripture, we jump this part when it says for all men. And we go you see, because when we, when we want to hold a meeting or a service to pray for our leaders, we are concerned, is what he says, for kings and for all the authority. Hey, the first thing he said there is that we pray for all men. I have, you know, sometimes you, you, you look at posts that people post on, on social media, you hear people speak, and then you find believers, I mean now, you find them say that, you know, we say, oh, we need to pray. You say, ah, look, this one is not prayer matter. This one is a social injustice that we need to tackle. So stop saying we need to pray. I, I find such people ignorant, really, really ignorant. But I also understand why they feel that way. The reason they feel that way is because they don't know how to pray. Or they have not seen people who pray right. 
So they've not seen people who pray and receive answers. Now, it's, it's, it's different. They say, oh, I didn't have any money, but I prayed to God and God answered and sent someone or gave me a job or something happened, I got some money. Oh, yeah. But when it comes to dealing with societal issues, when it comes to dealing with government, when it comes to dealing with um, injustice, you see, people ha don't understand how God operates in that realm. So they say, come on now, now. I mean, we're talking about dealing with evil government. You're talking about prayer. What will prayer do? See that? You know, some people even go as far as saying, that's how we Christians deceive ourselves. You know, there's so much ignorance. <laughs> It's got so much ignorance. And it's simply because you don't know God. That's why Jeremiah told us that, look, the best thing to glory about is to glory that you understand him. Understand him. People don't understand God. So because they don't understand God, they don't know his plan. And when they don't know his plan, they are in darkness. And when they are in darkness, they fight like people in darkness. I'm going to be sharing a lot with you this week to, to really help you the best way I can, trusting that the Holy Spirit will minister to your hearts so that you will understand and, and begin to walk right. Where things like this is concerned. Is God concerned about our society? Very much concerned about our society. Is he concerned about the kind of government we have? He, he, he is too con more concerned than you are even are. <laughs> Praise God. You see, because you don't have enough information to even be concerned. You are just concerned because of your own selfish reason or because of what you have heard or you feel from other people. You don't even know the truth, the depth of truth to be even concerned. You know, that's why sometimes when things are happening and then the, the people are saying one thing and the government is saying another thing. And then someone like, so who's telling the truth? You don't have the information that the government have. So you are looking at it from the street view, from what you know, what you think you know. And it's the same thing sometimes people say, God, why is God too slow? You don't see what he's saying. <laughs> Praise God. Now that's why he gave us this command that we should first of all pray, not just for yourself, pray for all men. Pray for all men. Now watch this. He says, now, I want, to, I want us to go to verse 2. He says, for kings and for all in authority. Now, look at the reason. He says, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. You want to live a quiet and peaceable life? You want to live a life that things are going and working out for you? He has just told you the secret. What's the secret? Pray for all men. Now, what's the prayer point? You see, that's the thing now. You see, because many churches quote this scripture and say, let us pray for our government. And then they pray and pray and pray and pray and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The prayer point number two. Father, we pray that you will help the government to make the right decisions. And then they pray, pray, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, first of all, that's not how he says we should pray. When you pray to God, you must expect an answer. So many times those prayers we pray, they are not in faith. We are just following the mindset or the, the rigors of religion. But when we pray, we should expect God to answer. Now, so what's the prayer point he commanded us to pray when he says we should pray for all men? Very simple. That the influence of God will be upon every man that men will submit themselves under the authority of God praise God that's the prayer point that men will come under the influence of God's spirit now I'm going to be talking to you about this all week praise God so so just get ready now can we just pray what I just read to you can, can you just join your faith with me now and that we pray for all men. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray right now for every man in our sphere. 
every man that have anything to do with our activities today. Every man that have to do and that have anything to do with where we go, the decisions we make today, Lord. Including those in authority today. From our bosses to the government, we pray for all men right now. That your influence will become strong over their lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We, as your children, we declare that your influence comes upon all men, comes upon our government, comes upon, it's so strong upon them today. That every man is taking a decision that is right and that is in line with your will. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise for this answer, Lord. And we see the results as we go out our daily activities today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. That's just how to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye.